All right, today I want to talk about the process of linting and specifically the website, website jslint.com. So, what is linting? Well, I have a JavaScript file here and I'm going to copy the contents of this file and I'm going to go over to the website jslint. This is jslint.com. It says here, paste your JavaScript source or JSON text here. So I've done that. I click the button JS Lint, and what this is going to do is it's going to run a linting process on my code. And that basically just means that it's going to check to see how valid my code is, if I've got any JavaScript errors in my code, but also the style of my code. So if I click on the button here, you can see I start to get some warnings right away. I can go through in here and correct these errors and keep hitting JS Lint over and over again every time I correct them until I get no errors here. Down at the bottom there are some options that we can turn on so I can say that, you know what, it's ES6. I'm going to be using ES6 features so I want it to accept the ES6 features that I've got in here. Run JS Lint again, you can see I've, I'm down to fewer errors. The errors will include things like the amount of white space that I'm using in my function declarations and inside my arrays and objects. Like here, after the colon, when you're declaring a property inside of an array or inside of an object, which is inside of an array, you should have a space between the colon and the beginning of the value. So I'm missing spaces here and those will eventually show up as errors in the linting. Now the linting isn't just something that's an error, it also gives us some direction as to what is the best way, what is the standard way of writing something in JavaScript. When the developers at Mozilla and Microsoft and Google build the JavaScript engine, they look to the standard for JavaScript and say, what is the standard way that we are supposed to be writing JavaScript? And then they do their best job to try and optimize how that code is rendered and run. So when I write something here, yeah, maybe when I come inside of here, let's take a look at this error right here. Uh, on line 26, character 24, it's saying that I should wrap the parameter in parentheses. And they're talking about this one right here. My arrow function that I have inside of the filter method on line 26 right here the standard says that I should wrap this inside parentheses and check and sure enough that error is gone moves on to the next one on line 27 I should wrap this one in parentheses so I will do that lint it again a bunch of errors come up these are the ones these are the warnings about the space inside of my JSON so I will fix those, but getting back to the standards, when they are fine-tuning the engines that read your JavaScript code, that run your JavaScript code, they look to the standard to find the most efficient way to do this. And it's like if you were writing an if statement. If I was to come inside my JavaScript and say, if the variable x is equal to the number 4, or x is equal to the number 5, or x is equal to the number 6, or x is equal to the number 7, or x is equal to the number 8, and so on. You can see that I'm going to have a whole bunch of possible conditions here. Now, I could change this into if x is greater than or equal to 4, or, or and x is less than or equal to 8. So I could do that in two conditions. There's nothing wrong with this code necessarily. I haven't valid, violated any syntax errors. Um, there's no standards that I've broken necessarily, but there is a better way to write this code, something that's going to run more efficiently. And this may not sound like a big deal. You're saying, okay, well, I put an extra space, or I didn't put some parentheses somewhere. When you don't do things the way the standard expects it, this is the type of thing that you're doing. It's just you're causing the engine that's interpreting the JavaScript to spend extra time. So think about this. 
if each one of these little errors only is costing you a millisecond in time for the interpreter. Not a huge amount of time, right? One, one, two milliseconds, not a big deal. But think about animations. If I had an animation that's running at 25 frames per second, that means that each frame is displayed on the screen for four hundredths of a second. That is 40 milliseconds. So if I can go through my JavaScript code and I can find 40 errors that were taking one millisecond, or I find 20 that were taking two milliseconds, or some combination that adds up to 40 millisecond, I have now eliminated, potentially, something that was perceptible to the user. There's rendering that is taking that much less time, which means the user is getting a better experience. Maybe my animation is running more smoothly. Maybe there's something else that's going on in my code that the user no longer has to wait for because I've linted my code. So JS lint, easy little tool. You just have to copy and paste your code inside of here. You go through and remove these errors that you find inside here. I've got quite a few in these. This big block of them all has to do with these extra spaces that I put inside here. And there's options down at the bottom of the screen where you can say you're willing to ignore the white space errors. Okay, you could do that, but it's better if you don't. It's better if you don't say, oh yeah, just handle everything, allow for white space miss, allow for single quotes, allow for this, allow for that. You could go through and do all of this, but it's better if you have fewer options and you're able to get your code to run. I hear it's saying I need to use strict pragma. I use double quotes. Put my semicolon at the end. Oops. Run JS lint. There we go. Uh, I need the space between the function and this on line 10. Oh, sorry. Right here. After the keyword function is where we're supposed to be doing that. Expect a space between the parentheses and the curly brace on line 10. Like this. This is how we're supposed to be writing our code. Expected return at column four, not column three. So this has to do with extra space. Ex unexpected trailing space on line 14. Yep, you can see right here it's highlighted. There was an extra space. So all of these things that we can do to clean up our code. Every time you fix something, you're getting that closer to what the standard is that the JavaScript interpreters are expecting, and you are going to be saving yourself time when the code is interpreted, which means better performance. And if you can spend a few minutes linting your code, improving it, and then you can copy and paste this back into your file, that means that you are going to have more efficient code, you're going to have happier users. And that really should be the only thing that you need to know that linting is something that you should absolutely do. So that's jslint.com. I will have another video that I make about ESLint, which is another tool that you can use uh, NPM to install and then run from the command line. So it's an alternative to copying and pasting in and out of jslint.com. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, as always, leave them in the comments.